Hi friends, I'm Jess and welcome to the Hex Library where today we'll be doing a mid-month wrap-up. Today is February 14th, Valentine's Day, and I just finished my 12th book for the month. And I know that if I don't do a mid-month wrap-up, my wrap-up by the end of the month, if I continue on the reading pace that I'm on, will be like six hours long. So I figured better to do a mid-month wrap-up and we can go over what I've read so far. If you have never been here for a mid-month wrap-up before, we don't do any statistics and I don't do them in order of lowest to highest rated. I just do them in the order that I read them. And when we get to our end of the month wrap-up, these 12 books will be mentioned, but they won't have a full review again. The first book that I read in February was Ashes to Ashes. That is the third book in the Burn for Burn trilogy by Ginny Han and Siobhan Vivian. I gave that a three out of five stars. Because this is the third book in a series, I don't want to tell you what the third book is about, but I can tell you that the first book in the series starts off with three girls, two of whom know each other, Lilia and Kat, and our third girl, Mary, who doesn't know the other two. They're not familiar with one another. They meet in the bathroom. Uh, they realize that they all kind of have um, like a revenge plot that they want to take out, but are unable to do re this revenge plot on their own. So they decide to band together and do the revenge plot together. And that way they can each get the things that they want to get. And the story kind of follows them finding out things about the past and things about the people that they're trying to get revenge on. Maybe things aren't exactly what they seem. There's also a weird paranormal element to this book. I read some reviews. I think this book came out in 2014 and I don't think I hated this as much as people who were reading them one at a time when they came out. I did like it fairly well and I also knew what the big twist was going to be because I had had people kind of not necessarily spoil it for me but I'd heard some things that kind of gave me an idea of where we were going with things so I felt pretty confident in where things were going especially with the end of the book the epilogue um, and I'm so happy with the epilogue because there was a ship that everybody was wanting to sail and I did not like that ship and I'm so glad that ship did not sail. So for me, that worked out really well. Overall, the series was fairly interesting. It was a really quick read. I read all three books over like a five or six day period. I think if you're a teenager that you would probably enjoy this more than someone in their 20s or 30s, though it's geared for teenagers, so that makes sense. But it definitely feels very teen. It's got a lot of drama, but it also has some interesting plot lines that I didn't enjoy. I then read The Hope of a Laundress by Brandon Sanderson. This is just a 25 page short story that takes place during the, like the final battle in Elantris. So if you haven't read Elantris, don't read this because you'll know what happens. Uh, but it follows a specific character at the end, the final battle and talks about their story and how things happen. It, I think the story that I heard was that it was written for a student of Sanderson's wife who wrote a paper based off of Elantris. Maybe that was the story that I heard. Um, I gave this a three out of five stars. It was perfectly fine. It, it didn't like add anything to the story. It wasn't something that like if I never had it I wouldn't have made it like I wouldn't have enjoyed it. It was fine. It was a fun time. Moving on. I then read When Mountains Sing by Irini Sola. I read this book as part of my local bookstore's book club. Uh, we are reading translated fiction this year and one of the goals is to like read something that we wouldn't have picked up otherwise. This author I believe is Catalan. Yes, it's originally written in Catalan. And I gave this a 2.75 out of 5 stars. This was absolutely one of the weirdest things I've ever read in my entire life. Like the beginning of the story, the first chapter is we're following this guy, kind of. We're not in his perspective. We're actually in the perspective of the clouds. And so the clouds are telling us what's happening. And essentially, they're raining on a guy who's out in the in the hillside picking mushrooms and they strike him down with lightning and kill him and then the witches steal his mushrooms. That is literally the first chapter. It is the absolute weirdest thing. The whole book like just jumps perspectives and it takes place from 
this guy's past all the way up into his daughter's future and you get like their perspectives, the wife's perspective, or brother's perspective, friend's perspectives, the dog's perspective, uh, mushrooms, a tablecloth, uh, roe deer. Like there, I don't, things that should not have perspectives, you get their perspective. I am traumatized by the perspective of the dog. No, the dog does not die, don't worry. It's still traumatizing. And I have, I want to say I have a lot of questions, but I really don't. I really don't have a lot, you know, no, I, I don't have questions. I have concerns. Um, there was hair floating in front of my face. Uh, I have concerns, but I don't, I don't have questions. I take it back. I do personally struggle with books like this that jump around timeline wise. Like I can do like a dual timeline and sometimes even like a flashback within inside of a dual timeline. But when you're like past, present, future, these two take place at the same time, but then this one's over here and this one's over, I get lost. Uh, so that was interesting. It's not a bad book and I think it's a great book for a book club and I'm glad that I read it for that reason. Um, that's why I, you know, this typically would have been a book that I would have DNF'd because it's not my thing, but I'm looking forward to the book club discussion. I then read Holes by Lewis Sacker. This was the book club pick for the AuthorTube Chat book club, where this year Kate and I are picking a book that also has been turned into a movie. Ideally, we would also be able to read the screenplay as well, um, but we wanted to pick a book that we were for sure going to enjoy for February because we've done it in the past where we've picked the first book of the year and it's been awful. So we decided to pick a book that we knew we would enjoy and I hadn't read the book before, but I've seen the movie and I knew that they were fairly similar to one another. So I was sure that I would enjoy it. I did give it a 3.75 out of five stars. I think it is a good story for kids. I think it is fun and interesting and that it has like that backstory that makes it like a little bit of a mystery. And I think that I can see why kids like this. I then read The Screaming Staircase, which is the first book in the Lockwood & Co series by Jonathan Stroud. I had originally heard about this series from Leanne at Literary Diversions a few years ago and I thought for some reason that this was an adult series or at the very least a YA but I think it is more mid-grade. The main characters I think are like 13 or 14 and it is three kids who are living in this world where there was like a large outbreak of ghosts that are able to actually hurt you when they haunt you and the only people who are really able to fight them are kids so the societies have built up these um I don't want to say gangs of kids because that's not the thing I'm looking for they call them agencies that's what they are so it's like agencies that are run by adults but the kids are the ones who are actually doing the fighting and Lockwood & Co is an agency that is ran by the three kids who operate the ghost hunting aspects of it. I gave this first book a 4.25 out of 5 stars I really had a good time reading it I think the world building was really good and I really enjoyed the characters I can definitely see where there would be room for improvement in future installments, which is fine because it's the first book in a series. I think there's five books in the series, um, but I had a really good time reading it. I did enjoy the story. I do know that this is, uh, has been turned into a Netflix series, but I do know the series follows the events of both the first and the second book. So I'm going to wait to watch the series until I've read the second book, which I haven't done yet. So I guess I'm leaning more towards like upper mid grade, lower YA. Let's go with that. Let's talk about a book that is definitely not YA or mid-grade. That Time I Got Drunk and Saved a Demon by Kimberly Lemming. I gave this a 4.25 out of 5 stars. It is the first book in the Mead Mishap series and it follows our main character Sin who in fact saves a demon and then he decides that he wants her to help him save the world. And so she gets drug along on his quest to destroy the four chalices of the goddess who is actually not really a goddess. She's actually this monster who puts a spell on the demons that makes them evil and makes them hurt people. They wouldn't actually hurt people for the most part. I mean, there are bad demons, just like there are bad humans. There are good demons, good humans, that kind of thing. But the goddess puts them all into like this trance where they're just like feral and absolutely horrible. And so um, Fallon, who is the guy who she saves, the demon who she saves, um, enlists her to help him get rid of the goddessy thing. And 
in the meantime, they have some very spicy times and have a romance. And it's a really fun story. There's not a lot of plot. It does have plot, but they ain't a whole lot of it, my friends. But the world building is really good. And it is so funny. It is a true rom com. I actually laughed out loud so many times while reading this. I loved the author's voice. It made me so happy. I absolutely loved this book. I immediately bought this book and the next book, which we will be talking about here shortly. I also think these have recently been picked up by Orbit Books. They were originally traditionally published, but I do believe I've seen that they are being picked up by Orbit. The next book that I picked up was another Brandon Sanderson, and that is Mitosis, which is technically uh, 1.5 in the Reckoners series. It is like a short story that takes place between the first and second book. I gave this a four out of five stars. I think it was a fantastic story to kind of add into the middle of the two books. Not that I've read the second book yet, but you know what I mean. I think it really fit in well. It gave me a good refresher of like what was going on in the world because it's been about a year since I read Steelheart. So having that like refresher in my mind has me prepared for next month when I'll be reading the second book, which is Firefight. There we go. I got there. Uh, I cheated, but I did get there because the book's over there and I had to look, but either way. I've been reading one book of the Cosmere every month, which this is February, so it's, I'm only on book two, but because this month's book was a 25 page short story, I was like, I can fit in mitosis. Next month's book is also a short, I think it's a novella next month. It's also um, the Elantris short story or novella. And so I will probably also try to read Firefight next month as well, just because I can fit in The Reckoners and other books of his when I read something that's just like a short story. Yeah. Okay. We then have Sweet Little Lies by Kaz Freer. This is the first book in the Kat Kinsella series, which follows Kat Kinsella, who is a detective. It's set in London. And in the first book, we follow Kat as she is put into this investigation where it has a connection to a disappearing girl, a disappearing girl, a girl who disappeared when she was, I think, like 12 or 13. And she has always thought that her father had something to do with this girl's disappearance. So she essentially is lying to her police friends and police partners and bosses, that's the word I was looking for, those people who are above you who tell you what to do, bosses. Um, she doesn't tell anybody that like she has this connection. And so the book is really her trying to figure out like what her dad's um, participation was in this girl's missing case and then how that is connected to the case in present day and all of the things and how everything she thought she thought she knew was not what she thought she knew. And now that I told you what the book's about, I get to tell you the fun thing where I can't review this yet because it's a Harper title. So maybe later. I then read Make a Wish by Helena Hunting. This is the third book in the Spark House trilogy. Is that what it's called? Somebody help me. It is called Spark House Trilogy. Go me. I remembered a thing. I gave this a 4.25 out of 5 stars again because it's a series. I won't tell you what the third book is about, but I can tell you that it is a series that follows three sisters, each of them individually finding the love of their life, obviously. Uh, the three girls run the Spark House together, which is like an event space that their grandmother and then their parents owned. Their parents died when they were young. I think the youngest girl was 12 when their parents died. And then their grandmother took them in. And as they became adults, they started helping out with the Spark House and then their grandmother retired. And now the three girls are trying to figure out how to work together in order to run this thing that has been a part of their family for many years. All three of these romances are different. The first is like a friends to lovers. The second book is more of like a wrong time, wrong place, right time, right place kind of thing. Like where you meet somebody and you think they might like be the right person, but it's the way wrong time. And then you meet them again years later and then you have to figure shit out. And then the third book is, I don't want to say it's like a second chance romance because they weren't together, but 
sticky. You know, it was a thing. It was a whole thing. Overall, I think all three books were also while being romance forward and having spicy scenes they also were very heartfelt and very emotional um I I'm sure I cried during all three of them they do delve a lot into um, emotional responses things that keep hold people back from our relationships um trust issues things like that there's a lot of that dealt into it so it's not just like a straight happy romance where you're gonna have the best time of your life it does deal with some heavier topics throughout the trilogy the next two i'm going to talk about together because they are part of a series and those are arrows of the queen and arrows flight those are books one and two in the heralds of Voldemort trilogy they are by mercedes lackey so Mercedes has this entire world that is set in Valdemar and I think there are something like 30 some books that are set within Valdemar but this was her first trilogy set in that world. It's not the first chronological as far as like the time of that world itself but it is the first that she published in that world. This series starts off with Talia when she is 13 uh, living in this very sheltered life where she's told that on her 13th birthday she either has to decide to go to the convent and be a nun essentially or be married um into a marriage because that's what happens i'm very much down with the patriarchy but i had been forewarned that this was a thing that was specific to the place where she lived and it wasn't that way throughout the whole book and the whole series and that is absolutely the truth so if that scares you off don't let it um, but essentially she is chosen by Roland who is a companion uh, which essentially is like a mystical horse. Um, they're stronger, they're faster, they can last longer without food and water, they can um, talk to you in your mind. There's a lot of different things that the companions to, can do but essentially she's chosen by Roland to be a herald and that means that she goes to the capital and she gets to work with um, like protecting the queen, protecting the people. They settle disputes between people out in the countryside. Like there's a lot of things that the heralds do but Talia has to start out in herald training and that is a five year course. So she is 13 and we see her from 13 to 18 in the first book and it's just little bits and pieces of her like getting into her training and learning about her powers and learning about what it means to be Roland's cho choice of Harold because Roland is a specific type of companion and book two is her first year as an apprentice her first year and a half ish as an apprentice and learning more about her powers and why she's there there's not a whole lot of plot it really is character driven there is plot but it's not like the main focus of everything I gave the first book a four out of five stars and I gave the second book 3.75 I am having a great time reading them I definitely think that after I finish this trilogy I will pick up more from that world because I really love the world building it's very well done I like the characters and again there's not a whole lot of plot but there's enough of everything else that I'm still excited to be here and that sometimes is really hard for me I, I do struggle with fantasy books that are very character driven and this really feels like it was made for me also it was written in 1987 and one of Talia's best friends her couple is a lesbian couple and also there is talk about thruples casually so it's very feminist for a 1987 book in my opinion and the last book that we're going to talk about is the one I just finished today and that is that time I got drunk and yeeted a love potion at a werewolf which is the second book in the Mead Mishaps series and I gave that a 3.75 out of 5 stars that book follows Sin from the first book, her best friend Brie, and a werewolf. And essentially, she throws a love potion at a werewolf, and then he thinks that she, she is his true mate, and they have to figure out how they're going to deal with all the things, because is it the love potion? Is it the true mate thing? They don't know. I did not enjoy it as much as the first book. I still really enjoyed it. It was still very funny. The world building was good. I still enjoyed the characters, but I didn't enjoy the characters as much as I did in the first book. And I also think that it a lot of it is like the kind of romance that it was. The first book, there was more time built into it, whereas this book, it was very like, boom, we're in love at first sight, which is not my jam. 
which is fine. Overall though I did really enjoy both books and I do highly 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 recommend them if you like spicy, if you like funny in your romance. Um, the second book does have like some light BDSM, I guess the first book also does, and then the second book also has like some weird monster fuckery. So like if that's your thing, I'm not sure that it's my thing. And it might be also why I didn't like the second book as much, but I don't know. I'm not I'm not here to tell you how to feel about things. So that is all I have for today. Let me know in the comments below if you have read any of these or how you felt about them, or you can just leave your favorite emoji to let me know that you made it this far and that you had a good time. I post reading, writing book, and planner related content. If you don't want to miss anything I have going on in the future, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell down below. And until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye.